Do you want to know the top 5 morphs that you might want to get into as a beginner? Then let's go watch this video. Starting it off at number 5 is the Hypo Melanistic Leopard Gecko. The reason I put this Leopard Gecko at number 5 is because there's basically two ways to breed leopard geckos. Way number one is through Mendelian traits, and way number two is through line bred traits. Most of the geckos on this list are all going to be Mendelian trait leopard geckos. The reason is, is because it is much easier to understand inheritance from a Mendelian perspective rather than a line bred perspective. So the Greek word for hypo actually means under or reduced. When you see hypomelanistic, it's a reduction of the melanistic features of the leopard gecko. Well, what are the melanistic features of the leopard gecko? Melanism refers to the dark pigments and features in a leopard gecko. The leopard gecko's head here is very natural, similar to what you would see in the wild. A lot of dark speckling and patterning on the head. That is melanism. On its back, you can see a reduction of that. It does not have a lot of spotting or banding. Spots and bands in leopard geckos are a black coloration. Whenever you don't have those spots and those bands, the gecko is less black. Therefore, hypo-melanistic. All right, number four on the list, the Eclipse Leopard Gecko. This is a great shot right now of one of the traits that the Eclipse brings, which is a effect to the eyes. Some Eclipse Leopard Geckos will have partial shading on the pupils of the eyes. Other Leopard Geckos will have what's called snake eyes or half shading, like Buddy over here, and even yet, other Eclipse Leopard Geckos will have fully shaded in or blacked out eyes. The second change is a speckled or spotting appearance. If this guy was not Eclipse, he would have strong black bandings going across his back. But because he is Eclipse, Eclipse tends to reduce the pattern of the Leopard Gecko as well as the color saturation. A lot of Eclipse Leopard Geckos tends to be a little bit more faded out in color than their counterpart non-Eclipse Leopard Geckos, which is why it's pretty tough to make a solid orange Eclipse Leopard Gecko, because Eclipse is always fighting against the tangerine to make it lighter. Now with the yellow coloration, you can see that that is a pretty cool combination. This guy's just like a nice, bright, vibrant yellow with a speckling pattern. The third feature, the Eclipse gene effects, is the tip of the nose, the feet and the hands, and the tip of the tail. While we're at the tail, we will just take a look at it right now. This gecko actually doesn't have it, but some tips of the tail will be a little bit wider. Some tips of the nose will be a little bit wider. See that? No pattern. And the feet. Look how the pattern stops at the shoulders and the feet are completely white. You see that? His pattern is along his back leg there, a little bit on the leg, but for the most part, if you look at the legs of this leopard gecko, they are very, very patchy and white in areas. So a lot of the hands and the legs of Eclipse leopard geckos will wind up having reduction of pattern on their skin. All right, number three on the list, the albino leopard gecko. Now the albino leopard gecko is one of the most played around with genes in the leopard gecko hobby because there's so much that you can combine it with. But as an entry level keeper, look at this beautiful animal. You can see that albinism will take away all black pigment on the leopard gecko. You might see a little bit of black in the eyes, you know, some of the zigzag pattern in the eyes if you get really close. Because they have no melanin in their eyes or very low amounts of melanin in their eyes, you can see that they are sensitive to the light. Now I'm not being cruel, there's no light shining in his eyes, it's just the ambient light that's going on in the room is actually enough for him to wanna 
close his eyes. Regular leopard geckos that do have more melanin and more dark features to their eyes, those dark features, similar to my dark eyes, absorb the rays of the sun and it winds up not being as bright for that animal. But because these animals don't have as much melanin in their eyes, their eyes tend to be a little bit more sensitive. All of that brown pattern on this gecko would normally be black if this gecko was not an albino. So what albino does in leopard geckos, it removes the black pigment in the skin, creating a lot of times an all yellow and an all brown leopard gecko. Now we will get more into this in some of our other videos, but just so you know, as a beginner leopard gecko keeper, there are three different kinds of albino leopard geckos. And when combined, those lines will not produce albino leopard geckos because they are located at different places on the chromosomes of the animal's genetics. Those three kinds are Tremper albino, which is what this guy is, Bell albino, and rainwater albino. I would say in the hobby, Tremper is most popular, Bell is coming up quickly and becoming second most popular, and rainwater is third most popular and worked with as well. They all have slightly different accentuations of the albinism gene. For example, the Bell albino has a little bit pinker eyes and sometimes a brighter skin tone compared to the Tremper and the rainwater and the rainwater has a little bit darker eyes and darker pigment to its albinistic skin tone. But they all do the same thing. They remove the melanin from the animal so that the animal will not be displaying any deep and dark black pigment. All right, coming in hot at number two. If you are a beginner in the leopard gecko world, this gecko probably catches your attention pretty well. It's completely different than the way a normal leopard gecko looks. And that's one of the reasons I put it at number two is because to me, when I was first getting into the hobby, it was one of the most outstanding leopard geckos that I could place my eyes on. I was like, what? This gecko is completely blank and it doesn't have any pattern to it. That's so cool. And on top of that, depending on what genes you mix these guys with, they can either be all white, a grayish color, or even a purplish color. So this is referred to as a midnight blizzard. There is nothing that anybody did to get this animal darker. It's just a random variation that comes out in some of the blizzards when you are breeding them. And the darker ones are thought that if you hold those darker ones back and breed them to other darker blizzards, that you'll continue to produce dark blizzards. Another characteristic of the blizzard gene is the eyes. Look at how that eye is all black. Both eyes are all black, except that one right there. You can see a little bit of a break in the pigmentation of the eyes. Blizzard is one of the genes in leopard geckos, along with super snow, that actually makes the eyes all black. Not to get confused with Eclipse, which was number four on our list, which makes the eyes all black. That is a completely separate gene and a completely separate trait that is independent of what's going on here with this little guy. But just a beautiful, blank, slate, single-toned color gecko that I really still love even to this day. All right, thank you guys, you made it. We are at number one the snow gene. In leopard geckos, the snow gene has two basic effects that it can create on the leopard gecko. If you have one copy of the snow gene, take a look at what it does to the gecko. Do you see those purplish tones right there? A very nice and crisp light yellow, nice clean white sides, just a very pretty and clean looking overall leopard gecko. But, when you introduce another snow gene from the other parent, you get this. It's called a super snow. It is two copies of the snow gene and it creates a whole different look to the gecko. One copy of the snow gene, two copies of the snow gene. And you can see the contrast of black and white colors on this gecko is so amazing that I had to put it as number one for a beginner entry level person getting into the reptile hobby. Along with Blizzard, 
these were two of the jeans that really caught my attention when I first started getting into leopard geckos, and they were some of the first that I kept. Okay, guys, what did you think about that video? Did you enjoy our top five best leopard gecko morphs to get into as a beginner? Stay tuned for our video number two. In that one, we are going to cover the top five best intermediate leopard gecko morphs. Please, if you like this video, guys, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, comment below, and please turn on the notification bell, share it with your friends. You guys are helping us grow so much over here. Look at that number. Look at that little number below you right there. We are growing at an average of 200 followers per month, and that is because of you guys engaging and watching and enjoying this content. So I thank you guys so much. I'll see you in the next video, and have a geeky gecko great day.